Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know all things work together for good to them who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. I am made for the eternal purpose of God. Write that down. I'm made for the eternal purpose of God. This woman meets the truth in Samaria at the well because she was made for the eternal purpose of God. I am made from the eternal plans of God. Look at Romans 8 and 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Foreknow, predestined. She was predestined. This moment was predestined. The meeting at the well was predestined. This woman was predestined before she was a, Sam a Samaritan. She was already sanctified, set apart, predestined for that very moment, predestined to be a bridge. God Almighty, despite her despicable decisions, despite her desperation, she was predestined and she was predestined for more, predestined to be a bridge, to be an evangelist, to be a fire starter. To drop her water pot and to say, come see a man that was all predestined. That's why Jesus goes there, because whom he did foreknow, he also de -pre did predestine. We gave you Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. Before I formed thee in the belly, I also knew you. I knew thee. Before you came from your mother's womb, I sanctify thee and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. I predestine you. There's a destiny over your life. So what I was made for, I was first made from. I'm made for the purpose. It's the eternal purpose of God. I was made from the eternal plan of God. And I'm now made of the eternal power of God. I'm made of the eternal power of God to fulfill the eternal purpose of God. That's why the need for regeneration, for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's why the need for regeneration by the Holy Spirit, because what I was made for, I was first made from. And because of that, I am now made of the eternal power of God. I was made for the eternal purpose of God. I'm made from the eternal plans of God. And I am made up of the eternal power of God because it's the power of God that gives me the grace to realize who I am, to unearth what I'm created to do and to become and to walk into the grace of God. There is a grace, a corresponding grace for my life. And the reason why I'm fearfully and wonderfully made again, it is so much more than my biological, anatomical, physiological, psychological, mental and emotional and even spiritual makeup. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made is be because I've been made of and made for and made from and I have is inside of me a grace. And when the Holy Spirit comes, I'm renewed forward from and for the eternal purposes and plans of God. The Holy Spirit comes and and reminds me and informs me and empowers me unearths all of the issues that I that that have been layered on top of me and and unearths the divine destiny the seed now has been watered and the Holy Spirit comes and cultivates that seed and through the water of the word through the regeneration and the refreshing and the renewal of the Holy Spirit to cultivate that seed so that it can germinate inside of me because except I believe it and except my identity is, re is repaired, I will never walk in God's divine destiny. So every destiny, though, has a divine, has a defining moment. Every destiny, every divine destiny has a defining moment. What's the defining moment here? The defining moments, the defining moments are here in verses 17 and 18. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that says thou truly. I want you to highlight that. I, again, I said destiny has a defining moment. Every divine destiny has defining moments. Critical moments, critical junctures, crossroads that will either propel you further forward into your destiny or will cause that destiny to be aborted. Every divine destiny has defining moments. I want you to write that down. You see, this woman has great potential. Christ is there. 
he's at the, he meets her at the well. We've read this for the past 11 months. We've shared with you everything he said. We've given you all types of scriptures. I even gave you the book of Acts chapter 8. As a result of this meeting, there's potential untapped and unlimited. There's exponential potential when the water of the word hits the seed of your creative purpose. Exponential potential. You can't even quantify what you're capable of. You're so busy measuring yourself, God, is as good, based upon what you've done and, what, and how you failed. That has no bearing on what you're capable of. When the word of God comes and hits you, when you have a divine encounter with truth. But here is the issue. Jesus says to her in verse 16, go call thy husband and come hither. It's a test. And it's whether or not she passes or fails that test that will become the determining factor of her realizing who she really is, what she was created to be and to do. Or go back from this place, back to her life, back to a man who's not her husband, back to a life of empty cycles, going back up to this mountain, going through the motions, continuing in an empty tradition and an empty custom. No, this is you. This is the defining moment, Samaritan woman. And the defining moment is this. Will you be honest with where you are? Write this down. Will you be honest with where you are? That's the defining moment. The defining moment for this woman. Worlds are awaiting her. Endless possibilities are awaiting her. What she can be, what she was created to be, is staring in the face. What she set up for being and what she's been is right there on her heels. Destiny is in front of her. <laughs> Desperation is behind her. A bridegroom she's never met is in front of her. A man who's not her husband is behind her. What are you going to do, Samaritan woman, with the moments right here? Because these are critical moments. One request Jesus gives her, go call your husband and come. It's a test. You know that Jesus knows she doesn't have a husband. Jesus knows that. This woman knows that. But what will her answer be? Because watch this, except you are truthful, then the truth can't help you. Except you're truthful, let me say that again, then the truth can't help 